Hello, everyone. Welcome to Miami Beach Urban Studios Live Art Talk. I'm Colette Mello, and today we have artists Jean and Ignacio Iggy Font here. I'd like to thank the City of Miami Beach Department of Tourism and Office of Cultural Affairs for sponsoring these art talks and other programming that we're able to offer to the community. Ignacio and Jean Blackwell Font are Font Squared, an artist couple operating Warehouse 4726, an artist-run studio space in Miami, Florida. Ignacio received his BFA from FIU and his MFA from the School of Visual Arts in New York City. He has been an art educator for 25 years. Jean has worked in a wide ranging roles in arts, hospitality, and nonprofits. She approaches art marketing much the way she approaches her art making as a practice in discovery and exploration. Together as Font Squared, these artists bring a lifetime of combined creative experiences to the Miami artist community. Both Jean and Iggy have been exhibited in multiple art spaces, including here at Miami Beach Urban Studios, I think in 2019 or 2020, right before the lockdown, uh, in an exhibition titled Translator's Note, curated by Professor Mirta Delval. And I remember that was a great exhibition, one of the last ones before we shut down. Thank you both for joining us. And I'm gonna go ahead and hand over the screen to you. Thank you again. Okay, mm -hmm. hi everybody, thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen because of course we have lots of pictures to look at. We're visual artists. Um, uh, so I guess, so you know who we are. Um, thank you, Colette. And thank you FIU MBUS for this opportunity. Yes. It's exciting to be able to talk to people. And I see some familiar names. So thank you for being here. Um, where do we start? Well, so we're, well, we're sitting in our studios, by the way. Uh, we're, we're over in the Bird Road Art District at Warehouse 4726. That's us. That's our logo. Um, what do you want to say? I think, <laughs> I think it's an important to kind of acknowledge that when we started the studios, we didn't know that this was a possibility for us. We had been spending our lives trying to make work at home with kids at home and family. And, um, you know, this was, this was a gift. Uh, and we started with a friend of ours and her foundation. We all came into one warehouse. We divided it up and shared the rent. And that went well for a while. And she needed to go to a different area because she had to move. And then we went ahead and took over the space and it grew to four artists uh, studios. And then a couple of years ago, our third year in doing this, uh, we were able to take over the space next door to us. So we grew for, to nine. Yeah. But one of the things that we didn't know is that this was a possibility in our lives, hmm. that, that we could have a place like this and make work. It, and it became new to us and we fell in love with it. Next thing you know, we're no longer working out of our house or the side wall of the house or, or the kitchen table. The kitchen table. <laughs> we're working here. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, you know, I'll say that's become part of our mission here. It's one of the things that's really important to us when we talk to artists that come in and especially young artists, you know, we let them know that um, this is a possibility. Having a studio changes the work that you make. Um, there's no question, you know, not having to clean up, not having to put things away and then starting all over again, totally changes the work. So and that's, you're, you're making a commitment, a financial commitment yeah. and a, a time commitment to be here and yeah. create work. So um, it's a little bit different than doing it out of the house. And so, you know, you could see our mission up. I don't need to read it out to you, but I do want to mention that we have a strong artist community, but we also... Um, bring creativity to people who don't think they're artists and we're always talking about that and we'll, i've got lots of pictures and, to show you and um we we should that. mention that we are in the bird road art district which is not probably the most popular district in in miami but there's about 60 to 70 artists in this district right now yeah. which is incredible for us uh, there's uh, lots of friends here yeah. And, and lots of possibilities. And in preparing this for this talk, I realized, you know, I counted them, we have hosted more than 20 artists just in our space. So we're really proud of that. And some of those faces may be familiar to you. Um, we've had, well, 
I mean, Rosie Gordon Wallace was the one that helped us start with this program. Uh, Maria Patino has been important to us. Um, Devora um, Perez, I think. Anyway, yeah. another and, FIU student. <laughs> and, and we have had one group from our studios actually go out and start their own studio. Uh, so, and, and that made us Annabelle Ruiz. Um, and that made us kind of think, oh, if this can happen, and it can grow, then artists will have more affordable places to be able to make work. They'll be able to share their experiences and with it comes the community that gets built together. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, so we've just been really, we've been really fortunate to be here. And as we have, you know, the longer we're here, uh, the deeper we go into our commitment to the community, specifically to artists. They are our favorite people. Um, uh, but we also open the doors, like I said, to just to to everyone, anyone who's interested or curious about the arts, about what's happening. We we have hosted events here for the artist community. We do open studio every third Saturday of the month. It's part of a Bird Road Art District event that's been happening for decades. It does still happen. It's a little quieter now, but it happens. And we open up our doors uh, on the third Saturday of every month. We've been doing it for five years. I think we've missed two or three. That's it. In August. In August, we have definitely missed a couple. Yeah, and COVID knocked us down for a minute. But um, and of course, we've participated in Artists Open, which is presented by Fountainhead. Um, we haven't partnered with Oolite, but whenever they do their calls for artists, we always have workshops here with artists committing the hour or two it takes to work on grants and not just for Oolite, but for other um, grant programs as well. Um, part of what we want to do is help artists become more professional. I mean, we're working on that ourselves. So whatever we learn, we share with artists. Um, just some other events that we've done. Um, Maria Patino is one of the artists that has been with us. Um, and she did painting circles, which was really um, was helping. Well, how would you say it was connecting to creativity? Yeah, for, for uh, maybe for people who aren't doing a lot of creativity it's a it was a good time to show up and and kind of get interested in making something yeah it was a very a very individual personal and kind of almost like a, a, a private experience where it was usually one maybe two people and they would just spend two hours uh really digging in deep to um to to their um creative exploration. And, and Maria made those experiences very personal with oh. them. So they they were, you know, some of them came back for a second and third time yeah. just because they were having such a good time making work. And they just got to, you know, have fun, get dirty, putting paint on the walls and all over their clothes, to, you know, in the process. Um, it was a it was a nice thing that she did. We have done uh, uh, it's kind of like an elevator pitch with laundromat called so tell me about your work because of course as soon as you tell someone oh i'm an artist they say oh really so tell me about your work or you're standing in front of a piece and they say so tell me about that well, it's really hard for people to talk about their work at least it's shaking their head yes. it's hard for um all artists to talk about their work they have to develop a practice to be able to do it not only at a level of confidence and comfort but also using words that align with who they are with the work that they make and that makes sense to the listener um, so that's one of the things that we have done uh, we did that a couple of times with uh, ron sanchez over at laundromat and then um uh, iggy mentioned before we started the the bowl project i think it was called i can't see the picture yeah the bowl exchange uh, was a um mfa student and it was her social um social practice degree her final project like her thesis for her social practice degree and uh, we hosted it here and people came in and made bowls out of clay and painted them and then they did an exchange so that was just another meaningful way of putting you know art in front in people's hands that are not necessarily artists and that's something we did with uh rosie gordon wallace and diaspora vibe cultural arts incubator yeah. uh, and they were in our space at the time so we were able to develop a, a relationship and we still are yeah. are together in many ways yeah, so. she's still really important to us um oh i touched the wrong thing there we go 
Uh, okay, so more Oh, there we go. Right into partnerships. Oh, this yeah, is it's, great. It's, it's just all, yeah, it's all partnerships. I mean, it's funny, we're not a nonprofit, but I do have a nonprofit background. So I'm, I use that experience to really inform what we do here. Um, you know, we could, we could sit here and talk about our own work every day and it would just get really boring. It's, a, it's really more interesting to work with other organizations and other people um, because we learn, we learn from them. So one of the, why don't you talk about the, um, the Miami Young Artists Collective thing we did. So um, one of the projects we, we started and uh, was this uh, Miami Young Artists Collective. And there were four of us, four different artists were heading the project, Alex Morales, Maria Patino, Jeannie and I. Um, we partnered with um, Behar Font Architects in, in the Gables and they were very helpful. Um, the idea was to take a student who is in high school and is thinking about being in the arts and kind of giving them an experience in a studio for, you know, over the course of a month or so, month and a half or so, yeah. and um, letting them make work. And the four of us would meet with them, you know, before they started the work, then they would have a couple hours two or three hours to make the work. And then we would talk about it with, uh, with her actually. And, um, She's gone on to be. Yeah, she's a filmmaker. She's, she's a filmmaker. She's a, I mean, she's you know, studying film and she's continuing to grow in her professional so, career. You know, so it was a, a great time to try something. We haven't done it a second time, uh, but it's still there. We're hoping to, you know, find the funding to do it. And we always we keep we keep going after grants and things like that to try to see if we can. Uh, one of the projects will we'll take it. off a little bit. Yeah. We also used to do the Miami, um, My Miami Story, and um, that was a great project to do, to bring people together in Miami and have them talk about the things that they figure um, are necessary in our town. Yeah. So that also was a lot of fun to do. Yeah. And then the final thing that's on this slide was the, the dinners project uh, with from Four Freedoms and... Um, well, we had tons of partners there you could see and it really was it was it was dinner it was inviting people from your community and not necessarily your friends but people from your community to come sit at a table and and have a conversation and, and get to know them um it was it was a really it was a beautiful event um we had a lot of a lot of people attend and we did it here mm -hmm. uh before we had walls yes <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've had some changes since we've been here we've done you know little a little building up. Um, oh, actually, is the wall there yet? No. So anyway, uh, again, just more things that we've done here. I, I was really amazed when I was, like I said, when I was putting this together, I was like, you forget what you've done. So for me, this was really, um, it was meaningful to me to see all of the things we've done, all of the artists that we've hosted, and just the, you know, the general public. Um, continuing <clears throat> to develop what we're doing by introducing art to, to people and people to art. Um, you know, we are visual artists ourselves, but um, it's weird for us, the key goal to having a studio is not selling the artwork per se, it's having a place to make the work and being able to talk about art in, um, in really elevated ways. Um, so you can you can see there's just a couple of other things we did, um, always around the artist. Um, Escribia Key is a program that the Betsy did or probably still does, bilingual um, poetry. And so we had conversations with bilingual artists about their work, and they sponsored that for us. Um, women's work. Uh, again, my work is very much about women and women's. That roles. was one of the nicest events here because. All of the women that were here, a good faction of them, three of them, I believe, were mentors to Jeannie. So it was incredible to hear how they have affected our space and the way that she makes work. So um, it was quite an interesting afternoon. We had a lot of fun that day. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, and then we've done exhibitions. Um, I've been doing exhibitions 
or longer than I want to admit, probably. But, um, you know, since like the 90s, probably the 1990s, I basically will do whatever anyone lets me do as long as they let me do it. And so I've gotten away with a lot of stuff. We don't say no. We don't say no. Um, and so these are just really some of the more recent exhibitions we've done. Um, we have had great partnerships with, like Colette mentioned, we've done at the um, MBUS. We were invited to, a, to participate in an exhibition curated by Mirta Gomez. Um, we have also done, I think we've actually done, we've been part of two exhibitions at the FIU Green Library on the second floor. Um, uh, Vicky Silvera is and we, wonderful. We partner with the school I work at. They have a 4,400 square foot gallery. And um, they asked us, well, can you guys put a show together, maybe four or five artists? And as, as always, you know, artists have a tendency to complicate things. So instead of picking our four or five friends, we decided to go out and create a show of the artists that are in the Bird Road Art District. And that's when we found out that there's about 60 artists in the Bird Road Art District. And we were able to create a show with 40 of them. And uh, it's an invitational. So uh, we don't choose the work. We ask them, we invite them, and we tell them, bring one piece. And we've been able to arrange it in this space with all the artists. Um, and we have some great people showing with us. Pepe Vedia was in the show. Uh, Nestor um, Arenas. Arenas was in the show. Yeah. Topico was in the show. Consuegra was in the show. So a lot of the, the Cuban faction that uh, came in the 80s were there. And some of the ones that were here before then. So, uh, and then we did it a second time. It became a biennial. And then COVID kicked it off and we're gonna do it again in January. It's, it's, it's on the schedule. Yes, uh, oh, it's, it's on, on the schedule. schedule. So unless something happens, we are going back at it again. We're hoping to get more than 40. We're hoping to maybe get to 50 or 60. There is probably um, around 70 artists now. We have seen the area grow more with um, spaces that our artists run yeah. that have four, five, ten artists in the space. So that, that's become kind of what's happening because yeah. this area is still affordable for people to kind of get a warehouse and divide it up and, and have enough space to make work. So, so um, and then, you know, showing work in surprising places is also um, always fun. Uh, Access Law is a law firm in Wynwood, and they have this beautiful space with all these empty walls, and they host, uh, they, they have like an art program, so they do exhibitions on a regular basis, and we've done, uh, we've done two of them, and I've participated in a third, and they're going to do it again in September, so, um, and they are really supportive and they let us again they let us do what we want to do and it's a, it's a it's a nice partnership and it's in a law firm so you have people who are not looking for art walking into art and having that experience um, which is important it's important uh, thanks to covid we learned how to do online events just like everybody else um, we when covid started we really kind of shut down for a minute and then uh, Access Law actually said, hey, can you maybe do some art classes online? They really, they wanted to continue their programming. So uh, that's what we did um, on, you can see the, like, you know, we, we taught people how to draw and we had fun taking self, you know, selfies when, with doing portraits. Um, we taught them how to draw a cup and we did collage. Um, and actually the one in the middle, they were doing mandalas. We did a mandala. Uh, based on the COVID cell. Based on the COVID cell. Yeah, right. so. Yeah, Iggy drew the image and then, right? That was your image? Um, that was your image? Yeah, kind of. Kind we, of. We, I looked at a whole bunch of images from scientific research and I created that one. Yeah. That's, so, you know, we like to share, but, you know, we, we just, we've been really fortunate to have space here and to be able to make work. And we like to share that with people. So I've done with creative mornings, I've done virtual field trips, um, uh, the online art classes with access art. And uh, now I do collage and connect, which has been happening for two years. 
and it's on the third Thursday, I host an hour of what I call creative play, because a lot of my art practice is collage. It's really where I started, actually, with collage, and then I moved into assemblage. Um, so we sit together in our virtual studios, you know, I'm here and you're wherever you are, and we make, a, we make collage together. Um, I have people from all over the world who log in now. I have Australia and Lebanon and uh, the UK and Canada, and of course, across the United States. Um, so, you know, and these are just some more of the uh, things that we did online when we kind of, you know, pivot, that was the word, right? That was the word of 2019. So, so we did one talk and I've, I've been a teacher a little bit longer than I want to, but, but I love my job and I love my students. So I, we wanted to get together teachers from different grade levels uh, and different schools. So I teach at a private school. We wanted uh, to have a, a public school voice and high school voice and a middle school voice. Um, and we got five of us together and um, we talked about how teachers are trying to make a go of and make their own work and how difficult it is and what we try to give our students and how it affects what we make. And that came out of, uh, we have a friend of ours who's worked all of his life for lawyers and he taught for a couple of years and he can, he's an incredible uh, draftman. And um, he was talking about the most difficult time he ever had making work was when he was teaching because it just took all of his energy. And he said, when I was working at the law firm, I go home and draw every night. But once I started teaching, it didn't happen. I'd go home and go to sleep. <laughs> so, um, so we wanted to talk that and talk about those difficulties that we run into as, as teachers. And the idea that you love your work and what you're doing with the students, but at the same time, you miss making work all the time too. So it's, uh, it's a great thing. I want to check time. How are we on time, Colette? You guys are fine. Yeah. We're okay. Good. okay. I just, I'm fine. just, you know, conscious and of it. This brings us to one of the things we're doing now that we, it kind of fell upon us and we've been doing it now for uh, three months. We're going on to four. Yep. Um, and we do a, um, I, I guess the, the hotel calls it an artist residency. There's no residency. No, I call it You that. call it that. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so it's like an artist residency. The artist gets picked and they do a month with us and they show up every Monday night and kind of work on their work. And their work is up in the lobby for that month at the hotel. And we do it at the Intercontinental Hotel down on the, and downtown. Um, and they have been very good to us and we're developing something together as a program. Um, and it seems to be working so far. So Mondays five to seven, we're there every Monday, hanging out, making work. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, look, we can talk about your artwork. Oh, okay. So this is, um, we're, we're, uh, because of the art in public places kind of- Yeah, we wanted to- We wanted to feature one of the things. This is a, a work I created for the Green Gal Gallery and it, um, the Green Library. Um, and it was, uh, the idea was it had to be paper work. And I don't do uh -huh, a lot of paper. That's right. The yeah, was, I don't, I don't do a lot of paper papel. painting, but I wanted to, I, I, because I'm a teacher, I've been hearing students for a very long time say very derogatory things about themselves. To themselves. And they, they do that all the time. They're, they're so, kids really tear themselves up probably more than anybody else does. Um, so I started to put together this thing where all of the statements that were in, as you walk into the library, there's three glass walls and all of the statements were pretty raunchy statements that we might tell ourselves, you know, um, and the idea was that, uh, for minimum wage, and I would keep track of the time that I had, I could sell each tile and the persons could take it with them, but they can also, when it's being removed, the words would change eventually. And hopefully, and some people kind of were thinking about how do we make this positive from a negative? And uh, the one part that I loved about this was that I had to go in twice a week for a couple of hours and sit there and kind of explain the work 
to anybody who had questions about it. And I ran into so many people that I knew and so many people, you know, there was one, one day, uh, I, I guess they were just getting to know each other, this, uh, this couple. And he's like, well, I don't say any of these things to myself. And then, um, you know, the person that was with him, she said, uh, well, I, I kind of do. And then it took him a little while, but then he began to kind of talk about how he also is uh, not 100% positive with himself all the time. So it was kind of interesting what happened with the letters and the words as it went. And they took me a, a long time to create those those words because I'm, I'm a painter. So they're painted and then repainted and repainted and repainted and, you know, and I have all the documentation of what happened on the wall throughout that process. And that's what you see on the right hand side. Mm. And that was uh, probably the first one. So you're seeing the first drips. I think so. Yeah. yeah. By the time it was done, that wall was covered in drips. And, and we, I think we photographed. But it was a, a great thing to kind of talk about and bring into conversation for people. Yeah. Yeah. And for me. So. Yeah. Um, and this is a diptych that I worked on. This it's is about more a student. like his work. This is really what I, this is more of my painting. Yeah. Um, and it's about a student that I had and he left behind. He was a student working on fabrics. So he left behind a fabric for me to, he said, do with it what you will. And he's probably the one student that I had followed from sixth grade all the way to 12th grade. Um, and we, to this day, we still have a relationship with him. He's trying to finish up at SCAD now. And um, our, our relationship was one that we just fell into kind of being kind and considerate to each other and really had great conversations. So I decided to do a canvas about me and a canvas about him and how they come together. So he's on the right-hand side, I'm on the left. And it is a, um, the quote that's on this piece. And I use a lot of words that eventually go missing later on but it's um, part of a roomy poem about how I can't live without you. So it was kind of letting him know how important he was to helping me be a better teacher. So, and a friend. Uh, and this is rhombus uh, and rhombus is uh, a shape that is important in many cultures. Uh, so we have here rhombus, we have, uh, wedding flowers from um, Asian culture, and we have the bird of paradise uh, in it too. Um, and the, the writing on it is um, from the four agreements. Uh, so that's kind of what I worked on with this piece. Uh, and geometric shapes kind of are, show up sometimes in the work. So, and, and they're, they're uh, in the paintings you're looking at, one is probably six feet by three and a half this one yeah. and the other one is a little bit smaller but not by much yeah <laughs> he <laughs> likes to paint big um oh, this, you can get a scope and, and, that one. and now you see a small piece yes. because i'm working on 10 pieces that are the same size um they were together at one point so it would have been 10 feet by six but now they have come apart and it's a uh, an homage to my father who passed away a little bit over a year and a half ago so it's um, all about him and our relationship together. And it is coming along. I think I have four of the pieces done and there's six left to go. Yeah. Uh, and now we can talk about me. Yes. <laughs> um, so this is my work. Like I said, I do collage and assemblage. A lot of my, well, my work has always talked about um, the experience of being a woman in this world, uh, what society requires or expects of you and, and I, typically don't follow those expectations. I, I've always tried not to anyway. Um, so the one on the left is, um, it's actually a music box. And uh, the drawing that you see at the top was work that my grandmother did. My grandmother had this, I mean, she wasn't officially an artist, but she was absolutely um, the, the catalyst for my creativity as a child. Um, and then when I was probably five or six, I said, I wanna be an artist. And it really is because of her. Um, she was always having us, or she would always sit with me to do drawings and be creative. So that's one of her drawings that she did later in her life. Um, and the, the pins and needles, it's, it's, you know, sewing is always a, a 
an important thing for women, women's work. Um, and then it plays, it has a music box and it plays Where Are My Sunshine when you open it. And that was um, a song that my grandmother sang to my mother when she was a child. So it's very much about my mother and my grandmother. Um, then the one, the other one there is based on a poem, which I'm not gonna remember who it's by anymore, but it was essentially, it's about loss and grief. Um, I was working through the loss of my mother, um, which has been 12 years now, but still hurts. And I hadn't worked on it really. I hadn't done anything about it. So this was really moving into that place of, um, of grief and pain and missing her and just figure out how to express that. Um, yeah. And again, more, uh, more of my collage and assemblage pieces. Um, actually, the one on the left, uh, the FIE is in the FIU collection, special collection, um, which was a, a amazing honor to have work included there. So it's it's there somewhere on the fourth floor. Uh, and again, it is, um, you know, you see a lot of you see the scissors and you see the threads and there's ribbons. And uh, again, it's about the it's called generations and it's about generations of women and how we are linked to each other um, across geographies and time zones. Um, and then the other one next to it is um, just another, actually it's, it's a transition. On the one side, you have this picture of Queen Elizabeth trying on her royal gown or whatever, the coronation gown. And then it moves and broken glasses and you know broken plates. And then it moves over to the other side is actually Diana Ross, probably in like the very early 70s. She has body paint and she's you know alive and happy and kind of stepped out of the, the roles that were happening in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Um, this is a new project that I'm working on that I'm very proud of, and I'm almost done with it. I've been working on it for probably three years now. It's called 15 Generations, and it is also about, again, that's the bonds between women, mothers, children, daughters. Um, it's called 15 Generations because in an interview that I'll have with the participant, I pick a person, a woman, and I talk to her about 15 generations that came, or sorry, seven generations that came before her grandmother, grandmother, so on. And then you think about the seven generations of women that are going to come after you. So you're number 15, you're the 15th generation and you are the bridge between all of the women that have come before and after you. Um, they're universal objects. They're just random things that have made their way to me. And you'll see they end up in a very organized fashion in this golden box. Um, through the interview process. Then I photograph the collection. And then on the right-hand side, you see a collagraph. And so that is a culmination of the interview that I had plus the collection that we made. Um, and I create this new generation of oral history and the memory that you hold, that your DNA holds um, and memories that you maybe you didn't know you remembered them, you know, like in this process, sometimes people will say, I vaguely remember my mother liking, you know, sunflowers or whatever. Um, it kind of brings up memories. It also reminds you of things you have heard from other people. Um, but, it, but I have a strong belief that our bodies hold memories that uh, we may not know why, like maybe you have an affinity for, uh, for Fritos, I love Fritos, we were talking about that, but for corn chips, right? And then it turns out that your grandmother's grandmother loved corn chips too, or, you know, loved corn or, you know, whatever. It's these memories that we don't know why things call to us, but they call to us. And those, those end up in that project as well. And uh, that's me actually talking about the project. And you can kind of see, the thing is anyone who did this interview with me, and again, there were 15 uh, women, they never saw, the device. I called it like a communication device. They never actually saw it because this was done on Zoom. And I had, you can see, I had all of these sort of, you know, iPads and things, cameras. So they would only see the objects and the box that they were placing the objects into. Um, so it was, it was always, and it was always set up on my, for months, it was set up in my studio because I was in the process of the interviews. So it was always nice during open studio to be able to talk to people about the project, the process, the 
you know, the technological sides of it. Um, that's, I mean, if, Open if, Studio is if great I can because say we something. get to talk. She has the interviews on on video, so it does. It isn't just the work that is the photograph of the box and then the holograph, but it's also the video of the interview. So you, when it actually, when it all comes together and she shows it, they're going. You're going to be able to see the video, the the interaction. You're going to be able to see the actual. Uh, communication device she'll probably put that there too yeah of course. and then the holographs and the photographs that the other people created so um and one of the great things about this is if you were part of the interview the 16 people that have done it yeah so it's all 16 actually. um they get they get a photograph back of what they created so mm -hmm. um that begins to become part of that go of their family so it begins to be part of Oh, yeah, I was so. part of this project. Their history kind of broadens a little bit. So right. yeah. I love that about this project. Thank so. you. Thank you. I think, yeah, that's it. Okay. That's us. We'll take questions. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. I love hearing about your both of your practices and your joint practice. Um, you're both doing amazing work with students and artists. I really, you know, um, Jean, I know you from, I think I met you first at the Betsy. I think I was with Kathy Bird. We were working on a project and I know, I've i run into you at marketing events and I, I got, and then I didn't even know you were an artist until I saw you with Iggy with um, when Myrta did her exhibition at Embus. And that's when I found out that you were an artist. So, and I was like, I loved it. So I'm so glad that I found out about everything that you both are doing. So I'm really interested in, I mean, what you're doing with the elevator pitch. Yeah. Great. I mean, how important is artists? And the, I, artists make things right and to visit, to actually have to talk about it, it's so important that they let people know what they're well some people don't want people to know they want someone else to but it's good that they even say that is like you know right so. to actually yeah, to speak about where you're coming from and i don't know if you can hear the rain it's pouring <laughs> oh my goodness oh yeah, yeah. pouring um, but yeah, to be able to speak about the work in, uh, in an intelligent way and in a, you know, in a calm and collected way, sometimes if you, if you're caught on the spot, you just start to kind of ramble on and nobody understands you. And so the elevator pitch is a great example that, I mean, business people use that all the time, right? They practice their, hi, Penny, they practice their, um, their elevator pitch uh but artists don't do that and i know they don't do i mean you know you do critiques and things but, but it's not the, it's but it's not, not the, the same, same. It's, and and you have a minute you really have a minute yeah um to really catch their attention. to catch their attention because usually it happens in a social setting there's tons of people around there's wine coming around or food coming around and you, here you are trying to explain it and if you get too far into it it the conversation drops so you want to make sure it's quick easy and you get their interests enough so that you can have a second conversation later on right right you don't need to say everything about your artwork right just give them a nice taste and it, get them pique their interests exactly so that's that's get their email get their email yes and you know <laughs> you both um you both you i know you you're both good at networking and how important is that to your i mean you're obviously a social practice you're working so much with the community in so many different venues and your warehouse and you're working with the intercontinental and can you talk about that how important and we talked about it a little earlier about the community in miami the art community yeah uh, um i mean for me it's a natural um I, it it's it's just a natural thing for me to want to do it that way um to collaborate to partner with other people to bring other people in um, Iggy has learned how to be more yeah, sociable I'm, and sociable. Not, not, not very sociable. <laughs> really? But, but I, I've gotten used to it and I've learned a lot from Jeannie, so it makes it easy. I will tell you this, that in all the shows that we're, we've been in and everything that we've done, our work doesn't sell there. 
it sells back when you're in the studio and the person comes in to see you and they said, oh, I saw that in that show and I haven't been able to get that piece out of my mind. Um, and that's when the conversation really takes place about how much, you know, what do we need to do to get this in our house? So um, you, you need to somehow get the people back to where you're making work so that they can see that you're a professional and that there isn't just one painting in one show. No, you, you come in and you see the, the body of work that you're making. So that's really important. So the pitch really helps to kind of just get them interested and, and an invitation is always good. Yeah. And then, yeah, it starts the conversation. Yeah, yeah that's part of the of the pitch, right? Is to like invite them for a studio visit, right? Come exactly. to my studio. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Iggy, I wanted, I really like what you were, that exhibition you did with the Green Library where you're um, about talking to yourself or people, the negativity, and yeah. you're, you're actually working with students there. Is that correct? Like um, people were work they would, they would show up and I would talk to them about, they wanted to know what it was about. So I sat, I, I actually had a table and a chair and I would come in and I would set up my table, my chair, and then put on the front some of the words, like where they came from, sketches and things like that, that I had. And then a, just a big question across it, ask me about the words. And they would come up and we would have a conversation about it. And I would try to sell a couple of them, you know, and, and they were like $8 each, because that's what they ended up being in terms of all the time that I spent creating 100, I, I think it was 147 letters or something like that. So, um, it came out to like $8 a letter and they would come by and I said, well, is there a letter you want and which one do you want to take? How do you want to alter what I, what I put up? Yeah. Um, but it was also, it, it's funny when I was busy hanging the show upstairs, Jeannie met uh, a bunch of students downstairs at a table and they've been looking up as I'm taping them up to the glass and they were asking, what is he doing? You know, <laughs> and she explained it to them and Three of them were like, oh, well, we're not like that. And then all of a sudden, one of the girls said, no, well, I have those all the time. And they were all like, but you're the one that's the most together of the four of us. You're the one that has it all together. And she said, no, I, I, I'm like that. I, I think like this at times about myself and what I do. So um, the idea was, you know, just put it out there. We're not, we're as artists, we have learned to deal with that negative side of who we are and with those points in, in life that are negative because we're able to put it into our work. Right. And when right. it gets into our work, we're able to walk through it much easier. Um, but not everybody does that. Yeah, and that's not something that's taught. Right, without, and, a, without a creative process that, you, you know, even if it's knitting or baking or whatever it is, if you don't really, have that, um, you may not have a way of, of working through things, which artists, whether they know it or not, are working through things as they're making the work. Um, so that was kind of what that project was about for-, for It's about for opening a door to a conversation yeah. about how we sometimes mistreat ourselves as individuals. And we talk to ourselves in a negative way because you know who's our biggest critic if it isn't us right so um no yeah i think that's a great uh great project i mean i know i do it all I'm, and it's funny you said the one the the one woman who everybody thought was the most together was the one says i do it to myself all the time right at least she was aware of it maybe that was why she talks back and like no that's not true or whatever you know but i think we all do that but it's great it's great that you bring it to people's attention yeah we live in a time where you have to give people permission because they're not going to say it on their own so the idea of giving someone permission to say i'm part of your group i do this also is was really important to me yeah how important i know you guys had mentioned it about grant writing i mean I know it's important to me. We do, I'm always researching grants and call to artists. And it's important, I think, for a lot of artists to be aware that you need to be out there. That's part of, um, so that you can have, I mean, unless you're selling your art, and, but you don't always want to sell your art. 
like you're saying you're selling your art for eight dollars because you know that was what how much time and I mean and that makes it affordable as well so everybody can have a piece of art right so that was, yeah that was part of the that, idea that too. was part of the idea that you can buy something and put it up in your home that has a story and that story will carry with you so um, I will tell you um we don't get a lot of grants, but there have been a couple of moments in our five years where we've had some really, some doubts about what we're doing and how we're getting along. And a little bit, we got it. Uh, there was one point where we were like, do we need to, can we keep this going? I mean, financially. And we do, Jeannie does websites and social media marketing for nonprofits and that money, the profit from there feeds this place. Yeah. And if we sell a painting, it goes to this place. I mean, it's it's not, the money isn't going home, it's staying here. Right. So yeah. so there are times when it's, when we're looking at it and we're like, well, we could have taken the money of that painting and, you know, put down a down payment on a new car and things like that. So, but the awesome foundation, which is a small $1,000 grant, they gave us one in one of those moments and times. And we were like, Oh yeah. my God, to be recognized, you know, just, and that was our really first one yeah. and it made us continue. And that's, you know, it's funny. Um, when I was at FIU, I, I, I didn't know what was going to happen afterwards. I'd been doing construction for a long time. I got a grant a little bit after I graduated, I got a grant and that's when I decided, Oh, I'm, this means I'm good enough. So I'm going to go and get my master's. So that kind of changed who I was then. And the grants now are changing how we stay here and yeah. we continue. You know, we continue. We get a lot of no's like everybody else. Mm -hmm. There's tons of no's coming our way. Yeah. The but thing, we don't thing, give up. The thing that I tell people when we're doing, you know, we, we, we all sit together. We do these grant applications and we talk about our ideas and we, you know, we work it out together. And I tell them, that's it submit it submit it and forget it submit it and forget it <laughs> because all you can do is ask you know you don't know how they're going to respond you don't know what they're looking for you don't know whether they're going to like what you say or not but you believe it you're asking for yes the i agree just do it just do it and submit and do as many as you can if you have time and they are some of them are longer and a little bit more cumbersome yeah. they need to make them easier <laughs> <laughs> for everybody yeah, that's what I say. We, do ones, you know, we do like the artist ones because right. we're not an organization and we don't really, right um, i mean we're not a nonprofit, so we don't really run in that world and most artists uh don't have nonprofits either so it's those little ones that they don't always good say. right yeah the right. artist ones are not as and, different and you right. talked about networking oh yeah you know um <clears throat> i gotta tell you we were coming up with an idea for the um I forget the name for, for when we were dealing with the high school student who was coming in here, Miami Young Artist, Miami Young Artist Collective. Yeah. And um, I mentioned it to my brother and my brother just looked at me and said, how much do you need? Yeah. Like, and, and I don't usually talk to him about what we do in the studio. I mean, that's not something we do. So just talk, yeah. tell people what you want. And somehow it shows up. It may not show up in the way that you are expecting it to show up. Right but somehow you get what you need to Putting survive it in I mean, the world. Yep. And that is a great project that you were working on them. That is gr really great. So, well, yeah, we, we hope to keep that going. It sounds know. good. Well, I don't want, it, it's been great talking to you. You're doing great, great work. So nice for you to present to me and our, our audience. Thank you so much. Um, I look forward to visiting your studio and, taking one of your collage courses online or even coming by, but um, thank you so much, both of you. And I look forward to seeing you guys out and about soon. Yes. Um, and I hear the rain, by the way, I did oh, hear no, it's the yeah. crazy. It's very loud. Yeah. So loud. Yes. So. Thank you. Thank you everybody for your time and for listening to us and, you know, I'm, and I, I just see I think Alexi and Mirta and Danny and thank you so it's much. It's nice to see everyone. Yes. We appreciate that. Yep. Thank, thank you. you so much. Be safe, everyone. All right.